So my last video was me talking, was me talking about my non-spoiler review for Spider-Man Far From Home. I know it was incredibly late and, uh, it ha and it probably happened to like to start reviewing movies like that, but I just really wanted to get it out there and I especially wanted to sort of keep track with all these MCU movies now that I really want to I hit start reviewing all of them on my uh, YouTube channel from now on, from as they are uh, coming out. And so, and if you saw my original review, like, you know I liked it, but it just, but it wasn't that good at home coming, and I had some noticeable problems with it that I couldn't really talk about because it, I had, I felt like the problems I did have were both, uh, very huge spoilers, so I thought I'd just talk about all the more detailed non-spoiler non and spoiler stuff here in this video, and so without further ado, let's start going into all the spoiler stuff for Spider-Man Far From Home. Okay, so first off, I think the main thing about this movie that I like a bit more than Homecoming was happy relationship with Peter and his whole thoughts on him. Because obviously, you know, like if you saw uh, the first Spider-Man Homecoming, you know that uh, Happy was kind of annoyed with Peter a lot of it. Time and she always tries to put him away, but here they have a really m m nice relationship, and I really like seeing the two of them in Iraq. It's actually the scene with them in the inside the plane. I really like that scene, but all that way, and way after the scene where Mysterio was revealed to had revealed him you know, to be a villain, but like, obviously, like everyone knew, I'm sure there are some people who didn't know that, but hey, it, it, but hey, come on, really, if you're a Spider-Man fan or just a Marvel fan in general, then you know that that was obviously gonna have, then material was obviously gonna be a villain when, no matter how hard you try to think about it, but even, but, and even besides that, everything like to do with me, Ariel was great. I said my original review, Jake Dylan Holly obviously great in the role, and I obviously, and I obviously had a lot of fun watching him, and the whole thing with him, as in his whole kind of motivation thing, you know, how Tony was always kind of pushing him aside and kind of still the idea yeah, of his holographic display thing and having to use that for himself. And yeah, it's kind of weird how Tony kind of does that for a lot of villains. The fact that he kind of does something stupid within the within just kind of creating another villain over and over. But even with that, that was still really fun. And the first problem that I actually sort of had with this movie is the fact that I sort of felt like with, like I said in the non spoiler review, I said one, I said I, I had a problem with just one character, and that was the fact that Mysterio himself, I think the problem I had with Mysterio was the fact that I feel like he kind of went a bit too over the top there. Um, and the MCU have shown that you can take the kind of over the top villains in the comics and make them more serious. But here it's felt a bit too over the top. And I'm mainly talking about the scene with him in the bar with him just kind of talking to his man after uh, he gives him the glasses of Edith. And then he just kind of, and then he and his man just kind of celebrate. Hey, and we even get his, he William again from uh, Iron Man 1 along with a lot of the other people with him helping him kind of achieve the show of what he's trying to do. And yeah, that was fun. It was definitely a fun scene, but it just kind of bit, went a bit too a little bit hot, hot in my opinion. But in terms of that, I still like it as a scene. And speaking of which, probably the best part about Mysterio in this was probably the fact that this is probably the most, probably one of the most accurate 
put Hayoyo Ham in film that we ever had that we've ever seen because mainly because of that amazing heat one where he was able to sort of crap he turned by losing scene and just about everything in that is exactly how I want to just see, how I would have wanted to see material portrayed on the screen because it was awesome. Everything that you see is just incredible uh, yeah, and just had incredible CGI all over and I, it was just everything I could ever want how to out of the portrayal of material on the big screen. And that being, and with all that kind of being said, I sort of feel like another pro something, another problem that I have Another problem that actually just, that kind of just came back to me, not the other problem that I sort of have with the movie, but yet another one is, I found it kind of weird how in the bar scene, he heard just handed over the glasses to Mysterio, and the sense that like, he just kind of gave him the thing that Tony left him. I don't know, I felt that was kind of weird in my opinion, and just didn't really, really seem like some thing that he would do. And the one last problem that I mentioned in my non spoiler review is the fact that the other problem I have is that I sort of felt like the thing that made no sense about some, something that happened between Act 2 and 3 is the fact that at one point he heard just, just hit by a train, and then he ended up climbing inside, and then somehow while inside, he's inside the shell somewhere, like, miles away, like, and his suit gone and all that, which made, like, no sense. I don't know, like, maybe there was some logic to it, but I just didn't see it at all, and the fact that he was just, just able to, like, get in and then out in the middle, that and just made no sense to me. So yeah, if I met something, please tell me because I may have met something there. And so leading into that uh, third act with the climax, I found it incredible with like the and with like the and climax in the sense that like everything that you were seeing, it was just, it just looked incredible. But when it was even a bit intense, not some of the intensity was kind of gone because I felt like some parts of it weren't as white knuckles as I would have expected. Then there were some parts of it that didn't, was just kind of weird and stupid, but it still looked really cool. And I really liked a lot of the things that we, that we presented. But now, in terms of some really exciting things, I think. Like, huh, about the end credit scene, because, for one, you see that the, that William was able to get the, an edited version of the video and credit, and climax to, uh, to, uh, the Daily Beauty, Daily Beauty, and we actually get, and we even see that material sort of revealed, uh, Pure identity to practically the whole world, and he was here, but it convinced them that he was here, that Peter was responsible for the end, for the destruction, and all the death, and that he think that he made him kill him, and all that, and so all that was was shown by J.K. Simmons as J. Jonah Jameson. Honestly, I had heard that there was like a huge surprise at the end credit scene of this movie, and I was really excited for it, and so when I saw that, I just went nuts. I did not expect the fact, did not expect them to be able to get J.K. Simmons back. I had heard that I had heard from a lot of people that he, that they thought he was perfect in the original Spider-Man move began, so they wanted to get, and so they wanted him back again, and the fact that they did, the fact that they actually got him back as Jay Jimmy Jimmy, and I think the both perfect hat and joy for that character, that was just really awesome, like, I just freaked out when I saw that. Personally, I 
personally kind of think that the original Spider-Man movie, I used to really like them when I was younger, but nowadays I think, I kind of think they're a bit overrated, but in terms of this, I was really excited to actually see uh, J.K. Simmons back that was really cool. And then for the final uh, end credit scene, we actually get to see that Nick Fury wasn't actually there the whole movie. It was actually Halo from Captain Marvel, so it pretended to be him, and his wife Soren was pretending to be Maria Hill the whole movie. And so then there, that was, that was really surprising. I actually have a friend who sort of predicted that would happen, and I sort of thought, yeah, I doubt it, but they actually did. Yeah, and that really surprised me. He and I, uh, my friend and I couldn't stop talking about it after the movie. And then you actually get to see that the real Nick and Maria were on a ship somewhere in space, uh, creating sword, and, you know, sword and shield and the kind of different, uh, organizations. And the fact that they were throwing a bunch of roads and just kind of watching over that everything and just kind of controlling everything was really cool. I sort of hit that that Nick and Maria just kind of swapped places with Taylor and Soren sometime at your Tony funeral, and I really like that. And so, yeah, and her, so, yeah, honestly, yeah, I did definitely have a blast with this movie, even if I did have some problems with it, and maybe even some other problems that I may have, may have not meant in here, but in terms of what's gonna happen now, like not just for the MCU, but also for Spider-Man, I plan on making a video about that, probably for my next video, because of the whole, you know, the whole thing, like I, like I said in the last video, just the whole thing that should have been happening lately with Spider-Man, I'm pretty sure you all know what I'm talking about, and the fact that they, that he may or may not be in the MCU anymore, but I'm obvious, I'm sad about, it. like, I had heard, like, as soon as I heard that, heard the story that he may not be in the MCU anymore, I just, just I just couldn't handle it, I honestly cried, the fact that we may not be seeing him anymore, but, but, but I'm really hoping that they're able to. I'm obviously really, really hoping that Sony and G need to work out a deal where they, where he is able to get yeah, so the fact that, to be honest, I just don't know what the MCU would be without him at this point, especially with a lot of their old heroes gone now, and so if he left, that would be kind of a, kind of a bad move for everything, and just kind of an kind of a huge danger to be to do. But honestly, in my, if they actually do yet to keep, if the MCU does manage to keep them, for future Spider-Man movies, again, if they actually get to keep them at some point, if they ever do, I think I'd really like to see a lot of other things in the, in the future Spider-Man movies, like, say, another real MCU version of Venom or Carnage or even uh, the Green Goblin. But I also think that the little villain who could appear is probably Craven. John Watts himself actually think Craven would be a good idea for the next Spider-Man movie and I would totally be behind that. Personally, I actually think a good actor who could bring Craven to the VM he would actually be Hugh Jackman just because he had Hilly, I, I do think he could actually look the part. Yeah, and so uh, we're going back my spoiler review for Spider-Man Far From Home. I so thank you all for watching. I hope you all liked it. Please like this video. If you do, please comment down below to tell me what you think. Please, uh, please subscribe for more content like this coming soon. I'll see you on next time. Take care. I see it.